Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. And in today's video, we're going to focus on how to create a component to extend the capabilities of Power Apps. Specifically, we're going to create a title bar or a progress bar. So stay tuned. Components in Power Apps give you the ability to extend the capabilities of, uh, and create reusable components that you can use across all of your applications. You can create something once and then use it across your entire environment with anybody that you share this component with. It also gives you the ability that once you build it and update it, that every application can optionally change as well. So let's see how to build these. In today's video, we're going to focus on building a progress bar and we're going to use some HTML code to do this. Now, first of all, I'm at make.powerapps.com and when I go over to apps, you'll see on the right side here, a component library. Now, ideally in your organization, you want to create one library that might have all of your components inside of it. Maybe you have one per department, but not you don't want to create one, one component library per component. So, it's, so to, to, to follow suit here, I'm going to go ahead and open up this bootcamp components, okay, where I have a common header right now, for example. Uh, there we go. And while this is opens up, there's a few things to note. When I do make updates to my components, to actually consume those updates are optional by the developer. I will have to share those with developers I want. I can also share with the whole, whole organization if I just want as well. Just like Power Apps, you're going to have to save and then publish these components. So let me go ahead and create a new component now. You'll see in the top left, when you come here, there'll be a, 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 a built-in component already. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, New Component. And I'm going to make this more for a tablet design, uh, for our example at least. So let's go 1366 and let's go maybe 120 pixels high. Now again, this is going to be a progress bar, so I'll leave the colors as is. But what I'm going to do is HTML can do some really neat stuff nowadays, right? So I'm going to drop in a um, under under text. I'll drop an HTML text here. Now you'll see it actually has yeah you know, whatever you want in HTML. A few things you cannot do. You can't put a style sheet in here, but you could do inline styling if you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste in uh, a command. There we go. Okay. And this is the, um, the command that, let me go ahead and pop in some double quotes here. Okay, there we go, and there we go. Anytime you have double quotes, you gotta double up those double quotes. And there we go. So, what this looks like, and I'll put this in the, in the uh, comments bar down below, is it's going to create a uh, application. There we go, let me go ahead and kind of make that a little cleaner. We're gonna, we're gonna clean this up a little bit, little bit here when we make it dynamic, so it doesn't really matter that right now. Oh, that's my problem. All right, no problem. I don't need that at all, actually. That's my problem. There we go. Okay, so in a moment, we're going to make that title dynamic to where it's doesn't, we don't have to have double quotes around it at all. But what this is showing us is I have a, you know, some regular HTML uh, using the, I have a title of the application progress or whatever you might want to have in that, workflow progress, whatever. Uh, HTML is a tag called a progress tag where you have how wide is it, how, what's the max value and what is your actual value. So my max value is 100 and my actual value is 100. So as I, you know, reduce it to 50, for example, you'll see it fills the bar at a 50%. So this right here is going to, needs, needs to be dynamic where we can actually, you know, make stretch that bar and of showing how much progress you've made. And ideally we'd make this dynamic as well to where the customer or my users can change that as well. My customer being the developers that are using it. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Just note that you can actually put whatever H, whatever uh, style sheet you want inside uh, as, as inline, not as actual style sheets. Okay. Okay. So, Obviously, you can make this do whatever, and there's tons of great HTML out there that you can that can use to be extend uh, Power Apps. But because it's a low code environment and a no code environment, you're going to want to bake this into a component to where others can use it much easier than what I'm doing right now. So this is a tough part, right? But once we once we're done here, other users are going to be able to use this in one click, change a few things, and they're right, ready to rock and roll. So in my case, I want to go ahead and create two properties. So right now my component's called this component one. Let's call this just a com progress bar. Okay, there we go. And for a new component property, we'll go ahead and hit new component property and we'll, we'll call this one, let me get rid of that bar there. We'll call this one um, uh, progress bar name. 
Okay, and we can of course describe it here, the name of the, the name of the progress bar, whatever. This make, again, this is to make it easier for the developer to use this. It's gonna be an input property and it's text. Okay, so I'll hit create. My first one's now done. And let's create one more as well. My next one is going to be, um, uh, let's see here, progress value. Maybe something like that. That, that will show that how far, how far you progress now. All right, so you'll see the name of the value there. It's be input, and this will be a number. And you can see, by the way, you, have, you can actually make almost anything dynamic. Screen names, you can actually show the color, you can make the color dynamic if you wanted to. But in my case, we'll stop there. We'll just go with a number, and we'll do that. Now, to use that value, we're going to go up into our progress bar, okay, go into the HTML, and we're going to go ahead and call out. To keep in mind, my component name is called com progress bar. So that's how we rest we refer to it now. So if I were to go inside of here and check out this application progress, we'll go ahead and put in uh, a double quote to break it like that, to break my uh, value, two and percents to break out of that. There we go. And we'll call com progress bar. There it is. Dot. And then notice we have a property here called progress bar name. There we go. Now, right now it says text. So that's pretty boring. We want to go ahead and correct that as well. You can do that in the advanced tab, and you can see here, somewhere down here as I scroll down, oh, let me actually select that property first. Oh, it helps if I actually go to the, go to the component there itself. There we go. Select your component, then go to advanced, and then you will see uh, what is the default name. So you can say, change me in the properties pane. Something like that. Okay, you'll see the, the progress value is by default 100% also. So we can, of course, change that to whatever wish we want as well. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size until it goes away. And the um, next one, let me go back to my HTML text, is that uh, value. So right here where it says 50, let's get rid of 50. Again, put to my and by two and percents. And I'm going to do com progress bar again. Oop, looks like I need to kind of get, I need to break that. Oop. Break that double quote there. Two and percents. There we go. All right. Come progress bar. There it is. Dot. And I'm looking for my value, which is right there. Okay. So now everything is now made by dynamic. And of course, we can say, what do you want the default value for this bar to be as well? Again, just select the, the progress bar, and you'll see under the advanced tab, there is your progress value by default. Right now, it's at the 50. So we can make it zero. We can make it whatever you wish. Okay, I'll make it mine zero so it kind of shows it needs to be filled in. When you're all done, go ahead and save this off. Make sure you publish it, otherwise people won't be able to use it. And then make sure you also share this with others. Give it a description ideally if you want, so that way people know what changes you made. Okay, and whether they want to have those changes also. Now that we've done that, we are ready to go ahead and use this. So I've got this application over here. And what this application is showing me is I have a little field right here that's counting the number of fields that you actually have uh, successfully completed in this, in this form right here. So when I play it, oops, let me actually get, leave that and go back to edit mode. Go back to new mode, there we go. Hit play. So when I make a change, I add a title, you'll see I have one now on there. It's one, one field I've actually done. Okay, so simple little concept there, just counting the number of fields that I've done just to give us some kind of example for a progress bar. Now, if I want to use that progress bar, here's where it gets a little bit funny uh, from a UI perspective. Hit the plus button on your left, on your application, and at the very bottom is get more components. I'll select get more components, and then on the right, it's going to say, well, what, what component library do you want to bring in? I'm going to go to my bootcamp component library, and there is the ones I want to bring in. Let's go ahead and check any of the ones you want to bring in and then hit import. So number com progress bar. After I've done that, it's gonna show up under, under component library. There's my com progress bar. And I can also see there's my header bar also, if I like that one better than the other one. Just delete that, Oop. delete that, select that. And now I've got a header bar that can kind of resize accordingly. Now notice there's only one property really you can set here. Okay, let me kind of move that down a little bit there as well. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and drop in our progress bar. Here we go. Notice it kind of inherits the background for whatever you're at. Oop, let me go ahead and make sure I have nothing selected when I do that. There we go. And then move that down. Okay. I'll make the fill color of that white so it kind of stands out a little bit better for us. There we go. And now here's where it gets kind of neat. So notice, first of all, on the property drop-down box up at the top left, we have 
uh, progress name right here. So I can go ahead and change that to something like, you know, application progress. Okay. We also can pass in uh, the value of that as well, of, of how far you, you, you progress now. In my case, I'm going to take this label, which is called, all right, label, label three, just a shortcut right now, which counts all these different values and says whether they're blank or not. So I'm just going to take that value, divide it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that tells me how far you progressed in this application. Eh, just, just to give us something to kind of play with right now. So I'll, I'll select this guy here, go to my, my progress value. And then I will divide, uh, what was that called? Label, we'll check, called label three, okay. So label three dot text and divide that by seven. And right now we're getting, we're getting zero back, um, well, we're getting zero back right now. So if I fill that in, we should hopefully, I bet you I get my, my, my math is off here, I bet. And so I should, I should have one seventh right now. One by by seven. Oh, that needs to be a number though first. Yep, so it's getting back 14%. Oh, there's my problem. All right, so it's getting back 1.14. So you see right here, it, it's, it's barely, barely shaded right now. So it's getting 0.14, the value here. So if I multiply that times 100, I now get the value back of, of 14 or 14% in my case, because that, because I never said the max value is got to be 100. So it's 14, uh, of 14% uh, of that 100 now. So that's why, so that's why it's shading that in. So I had to multiply that by 100, and that gives me my value now. So Al, as I play this, I can go ahead and start filling in some stuff. There we go. And you can see that it starts to fill it in here. Okay. There we go. Oop. Until you're all done. Perfect. So this gives you, uh, you can use this a number of ways, of course, but this is a simple example about how to use HTML to kind of create a lot prettier components what Power Apps can give you. Power Apps is a very definitive look and feel, right? And sometimes you want to break that a little bit. So you look at HTML text to figure out how to break those and make it look, make your, your, your form look a lot more stylized. The progress bar is one example of that, but there are many in HTML you can use. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe if you can. Uh, and also ring the bell so you find out when we do more videos like this. We try to make a few videos a week. Uh, also, you can find our website at pragmaticworks.com. On that website, we have things like boot camps for Power Apps, uh, on-demand training, and we also do things like hackathons where we teach you how to fish with your own examples. Again, thank you for joining me today. Have a great day.